Super Thursday! Woo! And it's uh, the fall season. So that means pumpkin beers. It is officially November 1st. It's officially yep. November 1st. And first? so. I think it's the first. This is a Saturday. Mm. It's not New Year's it is new. It's, it's November it's 2nd. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, it's um, November but 1st ish. It's definitely November. Yeah, that does ring in turkeys and yams and <laughs> pumpkin beer. So, yep. as everyone probably is aware of and sick of hearing, <laughs> I don't like pumpkin beer, so we We're gonna did, get this out of the way. Um, yes. The beer we're, we're doing going, today is... I'm gonna interrupt you. Apparently, I'm letting you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's from Almanac Brewing, again. Um, awesome brewery, up and coming, good stuff. Mm -hmm. If you find it, buy it and drink it. Yeah. Um, but this is... <laughs> Here's a man crest on Jesse right now, so... Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is everything that Steve hates. It's pumpkin beer and mm -hmm. a barley wine. And yet I love this beer. Which is why I agreed to do this episode, because I do love uh, Almanac. It's does, allowed. Yeah, Almanac does no wrong, so. I wouldn't say, uh, I don't know if you love this beer necessarily. I think you're willing to trust that it's a great beer because it's an Almanac beer, no? Well, no, I've had this, and I do. I've, you have had this? Yeah, I, f I love this beer. It's fantastic. Oh. And in fact, I went off on Facebook one day about how oh. amazing it was, even though it was pumpkin. I missed that post, apparently. So. I think anything Almanac, though, um, safe to say. It's gonna be delicious. It's gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, like, enough that I remember the last time we did Almanac on the show, we did. Cheers. Yeah. We, we, well, I was gonna say we did three beers, but we did like two beers and an extra of theirs, and they right. were all great, so. So yeah, this is, uh, in case you don't know, this is Almanac's Heirloom Pumpkin Barley Wine. Um, it's 50% uh, ale brewed with pumpkins aged in brandy barrels and 50% ale brewed with spices. Spices. So I'm unclear it's on the, the spices. spices. Maybe I've heard the description or we did a little bit of research. It's like nutmeg. I'm getting some nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon off of it. Yeah, Maybe. we don't All we spice. don't know for sure, so. All spice. All spice of, is kind of the given. Yeah. That's this like the Mrs. Is, Dash of pumpkin beers. Yeah. Well, before we get into that, we did no research on this, so uh, apologies. We just thought, we just and Jesse, saw it was, uh, was Almanac, knew it yeah. was gonna be tasty. <laughs> Well, like, well, Almanac beer, duh. So you do get like those classic pumpkin beer. A little bit, yeah. Just like just a little bit of nutmeg. It's all very subtle, which is one of the things I like about this beer. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest problem I have with pumpkin beers is that it's just too much spice in your face. It's sweet. It's it's gooey. Spice. And people like what, that, what, what, and that's what, fine. Okay, what would you say is your ultimate, like? Okay, so not saying okay, like Southern Tier pumpkin. No. That's your beer. ultimate. I hate that beer. Um, because I think that beer's great. That's a question. No, um, but I, I, I understand what you're saying because that is like the ultimate spiced pumpkin beer that tastes like. Well, and it pie. should be noted that I don't hate the flavor. I, I don't hate the beer. I don't think they're poorly made. I don't think anything like that. Clearly, I it's just, not poorly made. Yeah, I just don't like that flavor profile. And I can eat one piece of pumpkin pie a year. We got that. And that's all I can deal <laughs> with pumpkin. I just don't like it. I just it. For that one time, it's good. I get that. All right, so whatever, and then I just don't want it in my mouth again for a while. But you don't like that classic pumpkin pie no. kind of thing no. going on in the beer. No, I like it. Um, I honestly, I'm kind of with Steve on this. Like, I, you know, a little bit of that I can um, get into, but especially with a lot of pumpkin beers, it's kind of overwhelming. This, on the other hand, is delicious. Yeah, it's very subtle. Wow. I think the sweetness comes from the barley wine aspect of it rather than the pumpkin spice, which I'm gonna say this. really brings a lot of the... I don't think pumpkin spice would add any kind of sweetness in any way. The pumpkin spice qualities of the beer. The no. spices they put that, into that, beer. I think that would more add spiciness than sweetness. I don't think the sweetness mm -hmm. is part of that at all. I'm gonna are say you this. kidding me? <laughs> I mean, is this like a joke that you're doing right now? Because nutmeg, allspice, and cinnamon are all sweet. I don't know about that. No, they're spices. They're spicy. They're, spicy. they're spices. Sugar and spice. Yeah, yeah, sugar and everything and spice. Nice. Yeah. I get sweetness off of it, so. <laughs> they, add, they have to add sugar in it. Now, I think oh. um, what I get off this, and I haven't tasted it yet, but you get that like initial pumpkin kind of thing happening, mm -hmm. but I do get a barley wine aspect. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like it's very, it's a line. Mm hmm. Here's the pumpkin beer and barley wine mixed in with it. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of bizarre to me, but it, it worked very well. Yeah, I think it's nice because you, you, unlike a lot of pumpkin beers, you actually do, for, for lack of a better turn of phrase, you do get some gourd character mm -hmm. off of it. You actually do get some Which kind of earthy, that I like, almost squash kind of character. Does Dogfish yeah. had pumpkin beer? Oh, I don't that's mind. Good. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
Pumpkin's good. Pumpkin is good because Dr. it's Chip not spicy. Awesome. It's just pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And so you have that gourd well, quality. You get the mouthfeel effect off of it. I mean, whatever. I think, I think Dogfish Head Pumpkin is definitely spiced to a certain level, but it's not. I don't it's, think it's, it is. I think that the whole thing is strictly the thing well, that's used pumpkins. This is speculation at this point. So, but for what that beer is, it's great. Mm -hmm. The thing that I like about it is it's 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 very cohesive because you know you get a lot of that pumpkin spice off the nose. You get that like sweet barley wine quality, but then especially on the flavor, you get a lot more of that vanilla of that like brandy kind of quality. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not like barrel aged super in your face or anything like that. You know, it's twelve point eight percent. Twelve point eight percent, and again, it hides that very well. But it's it's like I said, it comes together very nicely. It's it's very. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to be like a, a Jesse fanboy, but seriously, Almanac is making some. Shut up, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> they are doing some. They do some great stuff. They stuff. really like, really are. Yeah. This dude came out mm -hmm. of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And no, and they're just, they're batting a thousand oh, right now. Yeah. They just they have not produced a beer that was like. Yeah, the not, uh, not yeah the, the farm to barrel beers that they've been doing like what was the one that was the sour beer with the fruit in it? it was name I cannot remember. They did a sour beer that was just fantastic. Yeah. Um, um, I think at this point though we need to jet off to a master pairings and see what Bill has for you, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Yep. Yay. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings. I'm your host, Bill Sysak, Stephen Johnson from New Beer Thursday. Uh, today we're gonna do more of those quick app things, you know, little appetizers bam, bam. for the party. Run Trader Joe's. Uh, these are little uh, tartlets. Um, basically they have tartlets. caramelized onions and feta cheese. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so um, with it we're gonna do the, uh, I would call this a Dunkelweiss. but Erdinger in their, you know. They just call it a Dunkel. Well, no, they have, you know, when they're translating, apparently whoever translated for them decided to call it the Erdinger Hefeweizen Dunkel. Oh yeah, Hefeweizen yeah. Dunkel is, is a redundant term, isn't it? It's always uh, well, Dunkelweizen. Well, it's a you know Hefeweizen means Hefe means yeast, Weizen means wheat, uh, Dunkel means dark, so they can do it. But um, let's see, these are a little warmer than normal, but let's see. We always kind of have that problem on Newber Thursday when we do these, uh, oh, Shiza. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we always have that problem when we do these yeah, vice foamy. beers, is that Woo! they're a little too warm, so we get the foam action. Look at that chocolate. That Cascading. looks so delicious, though. It's great the way it cascades. So, uh, Ray Daniels really cool proud trick, of I've done it on master pairings before. If you have a chilled uh, Hefeweizen, you can invert the glass over the top of it and pull it out as it starts to fill the glass and it'll eventually warm up. Um, we're gonna so get we're gonna take things. a short break and in 20 <laughs> minutes we'll come back with the beers properly. <laughs> yes, we're gonna get these things squared away, so just a minute. So when you pour a Hefeweizen, whether you're trying to pour something where you're inverting it, uh, the bottom line is these kind of glasses, they're called Voss glasses, work really well for the Hefeweizen. They maintain a nice head. Uh, Dunkelweizens are a little bit different. They have, uh, they're not the same foam structure as a classic Hefeweizen. Um, but the bottom line is they still have yeast on the bottom. So you can agitate it a little bit and when you're ready you can kind of pour a nice yeast shot in there and that's going to add extra flavor and taste. Cheers. Cheers. I've been kind of giving mine the money shot, so. Great German Dunkelweizen. Germans definitely, when they have dark beers, have a sweetness to them. Mm -hmm. Very classic. Um, has the tartness of the wheat. Refreshing, but now 5. I need to. 3%. I'm going to ask you a question because I've had this kind of in the back of my mind for a while. But I, I, I don't know if this is just my opinion that's incorrect, or if it's an accurate statement. But when we talk, when we do, when we do hop, hoppy beers, hop forward beers, or like big IRS beers that are like strong chocolate coffee kind of things. We always take in the aroma, we always deal with the aroma. Um, beers like this are less about the aroma and more about the flavor. Is that a correct statement? I mean, you're gonna get the uh, same kind of bready aroma on a lot of them, but it's you're not really looking for anything specific out of the aroma well, of these beers. It's more about the flavor profile that you're going for. Here, here's where this all stems from. This is not a lager, mm -hmm. but lagers, versus ales. So mm -hmm. ales, big phenols, esters, big aggressive, uh, brewed at a warmer temperature. The whole concept of lagering came about in the 1400s where 
they started to only they only historically brewed beers from late September to early March and they started to cellaring them and laying them down and that's where the whole term lagering came about right they uh, at the base of the Swiss Alps they would and that's go traditionally at my box it's a well no, there's certain beers that were brewed to be laid down. Mm -hmm. It could be a, a Merzen, uh, a Maybach. Um, there's Beer de Guards, mm -hmm. uh, Beer de Mars, okay. Saisons. Right. Um, but the concept was you needed to not brew during the warmer months because the beers would become infected from the yeast. As they started using these lagering uh, methods, what happened was bacteria that would naturally make beer sour back then mm -hmm. uh, what could not survive in the colder temperatures of these ice caves. Basically, they were caves where they'd bring blocks of ice down in there to keep them cool all throughout the summer. Um, also, the yeast strains kind of died off, and they started having these yeasts that would start to uh, re-ferment or ferment the beer that were bottom, uh, you know, called bottom fermentation yeast. And so the yeast would actually start up. Historically, with ales and, and prehistorically, you would have this kind of uh, foaming, bubbly happiness on top. They would take that and use that as starter for the next beer. Now they figured, they discovered that they had to use the bottom yeast. A couple concepts happened. It became, lo it took longer for the yeast to work. It'd take a couple extra weeks. And then they would come out, they'd be kind of sulfury, the beers from the yeast. So they would have to lay them down even longer. And then in a month, the brewers that were patient and waited came up with this excellent beer. But the beer had less aroma, less, less flavor. And so what would happen is with less aroma and less flavor, they became more subtle in flow profile. So jumping back to you, we have German lagers. Now German ales are mm -hmm. also much more subtle compared right. to that because of that whole historical use and the um, predisposed uh, German brewers as far as doing more nuanced ingredients as far as over the top ingredients. So even though these are ale based beers, they're gonna be much more subtle. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that that's why the aroma is different. It's, it means, that, it does mean why the aroma is different is that it's gonna be much more subtle, just like the flavor prof profile is much more subtle. And so that's why the aroma, hopefully- Is not as big a different deal. It, is, is it a big a deal because it's more about the overall experience of the beer right. and the subtleness that comes across. Because the, way, it, the, the way they design these glasses is more about getting the aroma while you're drinking it right. than while you're smelling it. Well, we, kn we know that a great aroma in a beer uh, is 90% of the taste mm -hmm. and also that the head of a craft beer or a well-crafted beer like this will definitely taste Carry like the, the beer. Flavor, yeah. So this is made to support a head, mm -hmm. and this is the beer glass that is made to support more head than your average beer glass. It's not uncommon to see a three inches of, of foam right. on a glass like this. That being said, there is a slight curving in there, which will also hit your palate Central, differently. Yeah. But once again, using the more the noble hops, the the more subdued malts, you're gonna get this more subtle bready things. Mm -hmm. The spiciness of the hops is gonna play, or floral notes from the German hops is gonna play more into those malt characteristics right. versus big aggressive American hops. If you put Cascade hops into this beer, it'd be a whole nother animal. Oh yeah, no, yeah. So it's all about tradition and having these amazing things. Now that being said, great beer, a little sweetness. Mm -hmm. We'll still get the bananas, right, still get the cloves. Subtle coffee, subtle chocolates from the mm -hmm. roasted malts. I mean, it's all there. It's just much more nuanced and blended, and right. it doesn't and jump out it's, at you. It's much like more what we expect. It's much more of a sessionable flavor profile. I guess sessionable is a good word because it is a five point three percent beer. The, and the beer easy, itself is easy not on sessionable. your palate. Yeah, the, this is not palate. a session beer, um, but sessionable on the palate. As far because we t we talk about that occasionally on New Beer Thursday, where we're drinking these big, huge, hoppy beers, and maybe they don't have a lot of alcohol, but because of the massive hop profile, after like two or three of those beers, you're just like, I just I don't want this anymore. Well. When we go to when we go to beer events and festivals where it's multiple days, I will admit that the more experienced beer drinkers have a tendency to start off their day because sometimes you're doing events at nine ten in the morning. So a lot of times you'll start off your day with a wit or mm -hmm. hefeweizen yeah. because or or a, a lighter lager, uh, not not a American adjunct lager by any means, but a crafted lager. Right. Um, like a victory prima pills or something like that. It's like sitting because, in a pool with your legs in. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting you acclimated back into it. Right. So I think this is a great beer for that. I could definitely do this, oh my God, with this, with a 
truffle and scrambled eggs would be amazing. But that being said, let's try this yes. little tartlets. These are tartlets with caramelized onions tartlet. and feta cheese. Tartlet. Oh, and with the spirits, just a match made in heaven. Now I will say, oh yeah, when it comes to pairing, mm. Loggers are kind of like team players. Mm -hmm. They are not these one-dimensional, aggressive, boom, this needs to go with this, and when it does, it's like this skyrockets. It's a very subtle pairing. Mm -hmm. They're complementary. They work really well. They elevate the food. The, the beer gets elevated, but it's very subtle. It's very, And I keep using that word, mm -hmm. but the onions in this bring out the, the, obviously bring out the caramel in this beer. Bring out the caramel notes. Um, the feta, the um, the saltiness of the feta is that a yeah? There's there, some, there's some saltiness. Tangy to, saltiness. Yeah. Um, the saltiness to this really brings out the the breadiness of the beer, right. like the the sweetness of the beer, um, and it really it almost almost gets it right to the edge of being almost a vanilla flavor, but not quite. I accept. Um, but it's just it brings out so much of the sweetness and it smooths out the beer. I mean, right. even though it's smooth already. It just it just becomes such a luscious like right. beverage. I, yeah, the beer's great, and, and what happens is it's just these beers. If you're not sure what to pair, you can never go wrong going great with a great German or Bohemian lager. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not just talking about pilsners. Remember, there's Dunkels, there's Schwartz beers, black beers. Mm -hmm. There's box of all size and shape. You know, my box, Ur box, Doppel box, right. Ice box. Uh, well, and here's the thing with this particular pairing because we get we get some flack occasionally for having you know outrageous food and beers that you can't get a hold of and whatever in the master pairings but you know what this is a decadent show that's kind of what it's about but this particular pairing if you can trade with joe you can get this pairing <laughs> you know like this is this is what four or five dollars at trader joe's these beers are 2.99 a piece this is a cheap delicious amazing pairing that you can impress your friends with that well, this would go really well with French onion soup, for example, different mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but that's a good point. But also, what I'll try to do in the future more often is, even when I am doing something crazy as far as beer, I'll let you guys know substitutes right. that, are, that are more easily available, like I did with our... Uh, uh, our coconut IPA and the Goddard Dummerong, I brought out the fact that just about any big double IPA would have gone fabulously, mm -hmm. or an amber or pale. So, um, but any uh, Dunkel Weiss will go beautifully with this, obviously. So, uh, you like the pairing, I take it. I love it, yeah. All right. Erdinger is such a fantastic beer, and I, I really, really, really can't stress how important it is to go and visit the German beers and well, enjoy them. Anybody that wants to call themselves a beer aficionado, really neat unless they're living in one of these countries like that live in America because mm -hmm. uh, I understand if you're in England you're going to drink English beers maybe mm -hmm. and you might be an expert in English beers but in America with our vast diversity and the fact that we have all these great beers that come to us if you want to call yourself a beer aficionado go to the BJCP beer just certification mm -hmm. program and taste through each of the, the styles, style guidelines yeah. And don't do just one beer. Get one or two beers because you'll be able to find them and try them. Try the ESBs, try the bitters, try the dunkles, try the Marisons. Do that. Then you then come talk to me about it. Right. Beer. Well, and it's fun to take these different like dunkel vices because dunkel vices, like we were talking about, it's a very subtle flavor profile. And what's fun right. is if you can get like a, a Polliner and an Erdinger right. and a, a Wahestefan. Right. And try all three of them oh, side definitely. by side and look at the nuances. German lagers, there's a lot of them Because they're not the there. same beer. John's giving me the finger. Okay, we're wrapping it up. Uh, I guess that means one minute, supposedly. So uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Cheers, everybody. So we're back from Master Pairings. It was amazing and delicious, as always. Um, I want to know, Steve, um, mm -hmm. so considering you don't like pumpkin beers and you don't right. like barley wine, well, I think you like barley wines. I like wines. barley wines, I just have to be in the mood for them. Right. I can't so, just drink them anytime. No kissing up to Almanac. Mm -hmm. We're not kissing their ass. Like, what do you think of this beer? No, I love this beer. This is, um, the first time I had this beer, I was I was in my typical, like, oh, it's barley wine, it's pumpkin, like, pfft, where, strike where two. Where was this, by the way? Um, I want to say it was at Grey Cloud. Oh, okay. But I think that's wrong. <laughs> I think that's very wrong. Um, so I, I would have I to... I want to say it was 1997. I know, I say that because... <laughs> Somewhere in New I say Hampshire. I say Grey Cloud because I know I had a really good farm to it table. It was the best of times. It was there, the worst of times. But I don't think it was this one. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, I, I do remember having this beer. Living and, in the um, now, what do you think of it now? Now, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, be, I think, maybe it's like math, where a negative times a negative equals a positive for me. And explain. where it's like, the qualities that I don't like about a barley wine aren't here in this beer. It's not sticky. What? It's 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 okay. nice and dry. Um, it's not overly sweet. It's not really dry though. It's it's, it's not it's not overly dry, sweet. but it's it's not sticky sweet. It's got a nice sweetness to it, but it's not stickly sweet. Where it's like it's, you're, oh. it's not sickly sweet. Sickly sweet, yes, or, st or sticky sweet, or sticky sweet. That's a portmanteau. Just made up yes. a new word, stickly. That's stickly. It's a portmanteau. It's not sickly sweet. Um, and then the pumpkin, the the spices on it, the sweetness on the pumpkin, the that kind of thing is also very subtle. It's it's nuanced. It's not in your face. It's not slapping you across the face with a big ass pumpkin. It's just like here, here's some of this and <clears> some <throat> of that. And they all it just blends together really well, and it makes for just a phenomenal mm. beer. And it's yep. just it's neither a overwhelming barley wine and it's not an overwhelming pumpkin beer. And that's the reason why I don't like those two particular things is because if I had one word to use to describe them, it's overwhelming. Mm. For this being twelve point eight, it's. Excellent, excellent, so good. Um, so, yep, we are well smack dab in the middle of uh, San Diego Beer Week. Um, this weekend is your last weekend to enjoy San Diego Beer Week festivities. So come on down. I'm hoping that we'll be down there. Um, none of the details have been worked out uh, because Michael Sardina has not emailed me. Whatever, dude. Someone got in trouble. Mm-hmm. Anyway. But we will be doing an epic show with Society. Society Brewing at some point. In the near future yeah. because they are fucking awesome. Hopefully in the next four days. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Uh, I post that on the 9th, or actually in the middle of that on the 9th. Yvonne and I will be doing a color run. Yeah. yeah um, that's on uh, November 9th. And by run, I mean light jog and walk. But yeah, whatever. It's a lot. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Color. Um, so that's happening on the 9th. And, Are you wearing um, a white t-shirt? I'm to actually get the most thinking, color, like, I think I'm, I'm actually going to go shirtless. Nice. Really? No. Oh, God, no. That's full on bear. <laughs> that's, Dude, what? That's, no. bear, that's bear God, no. no one wants to see that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think, think, I think they that. give you a white t-shirt as part of your, your, uh, yeah. your packet. Yeah. Package. Nice. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you're in the area in Riverside, stop by. Say hey. Throw a color packet at us. That would be awesome. Throw some cool um, starch in his face. And then we have other things coming up in November, but we're not going to tell them about you now. Yep. What? We're not going to tell them about you now. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell, tell those about things them now. about our audience. <laughs> <laughs> that was my rare form of dyslexia popping in. Steve Every had two glasses of my homebrew and now he's drunk. English. Mm -hmm. So on that note, anyway, on that note, stay safe and drink beer. Yeah.